Welcome back. In the last video I talked about different types of monitor modules and how they act as an interface between addressable or intelligent fire alarm panels and conventional devices. I mentioned that you can't connect a conventional smoke detector to a monitor module though because a conventional smoke detector needs power. Um, conventional zones on conventional fire alarm panels provide enough power to power up those devices. Um, that's just the way they were designed. But regular monitor modules don't. They only have a connection. The only connection to them is the data circuit or the SLC from the addressable fire alarm panel. And that's not 24 volts power. It's not enough to power up a conventional smoke detector. So they do make a monitor module which does have that capability. It requires external power hookup to it. So if you were to, the most common application for this type of module, which is an FZM as you can see in the picture, or a field zone module, would be a retrofit application. By that I mean maybe you're replacing um, a conventional fire alarm panel with an addressable one, but you're not, con you're not changing all the devices in the field. Um, so if you had different zones that had both smoke detectors, maybe heat detectors and pull stations on it, um, and I'm talking about two wire smoke detectors that need, you know, the zone needs to have 24 volts power. What you would use is a f one of these field zone modules. So the the only the, the major difference is the external power hookup. So uh, the 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 data is hooked up the same way. The modules look very similar to the other types of modules we've looked at. So I'll hook up the data from the panel, you know, the SLC, and then. On this panel, I drew it a little bit. I, I drew this panel differently than I have in the in the, some of the other videos. In the past, I was drawing two NAC circuits. Well, this one, I have this new terminal at the bottom here, um, as you can see, and I put VR, and that stands for voltage resettable. Um, I think I explained this in one of the earlier videos, but what it basically means is when you it's it's 24 volts power, and when you push the reset button on the panel. Um, that voltage will drop out, usually for a short period of time, like five seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook that resettable power up to terminals 11 and 10 on the FCM. So bear with me here. Because of the way I laid this out, my wires are all going to be kind of crossing. That needs to go to 11, 10 here. So now this module has data hooked up. It's got external power, which would be... 24 volts DC um, and so what it does is it takes and I think in, I think I explained in the FMMs that the data is what's essentially passed through to these terminal 6 and 7 down here and put out onto the module in this application it uses this external power to put to apply to terminals 6 and 7 so now you have enough power to power up a two wire conventional smoke detector so if I had an existing zone of devices, let's say these are smoke detectors, maybe one's a heat, and then you have a pull station at the end, that circuit would still be hooked up um, the same way as it was in the past. It would be now, you know, this is just a conventional circuit now. So it goes into one smoke detector, out to the next, out to the next, to the pull station, and at the end we're going to have our end line resistor. I'll do the same thing with the negative real quick. I'm just going to go to the bottom just to make it quicker. And at the end, we're going to have our N-line resistor. Now, if, you, if you're using a panel that does not have resettable power, then you can use an external power supply, but you'd have to go through a relay that drops out when the panel's reset, which is just a programming feature. It's pretty simple to do. I'm not going to draw that out and get into it right now. But so now this, this, these terminals 6 and 7, are, it's just a conventional circuit like it was you know, on, on the FMM one. The only difference is, like I've said a couple times now, you can have 24 volt uh, or conventional smoke detectors, two wire smoke detectors that require 24 volts um, to work. Um, this module, like the FMM one, could be class A or class B. I could, I could draw a return. Instead of putting the resistor there, I could draw a return back to terminals 8 and 9 like I showed you in the last video. It's not a very common application, although I guess it's probably more common for the FZM than it would be for an FMM 
just because it's mostly used in a retrofit application. So if you're at an older building, replace the panel, if the existing wiring were class A, you'd probably keep it that way and, um, it, you know, and return back on terminals eight and nine and then put the resistor there. Um, all of the modules that I've described so far, they make another version of them, which is um, they come in a card that has multiple modules on that card. So like this FZM, right now you see one big bulky module which fits in a 4x4 junction box. They make a card, I don't know exactly what the dimensions are, but you would get six module points off of that one card. And all the hookups are the same, you still need, you still need data going to it, you still need um, power going to it, and then you have the output, well, I call it the output, but you know, the, the conventional circuit hooked up to it. Um, and I think I will make a video on that at some point, but first I want to get through the rest of the, the, the different types of modules that are out there. Um, some of the output modules, like control modules and relay modules and stuff like that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, I will see you in the next video.